Uh, and by the way, we are in the Battle of Tabuk, which was the first great battle that happened between the Muslims that had now taken over um, the Arabian Peninsula. And basically, this was the first forefront that was open, which was the Empire of Rome. So Battle of Tabuk, we did one part of it last time, and now we will continue uh, on that same uh, area, inshallah. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about the ones who understand. Suratoba, verse 88. But the messenger and those who believe with him fought with their wealth and their lives. Those will have all that is good, and those are the ones that are successful. أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِيمٍ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ Surah Tawbah, verse 89. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them gardens underneath rich rivers flow, wherein they will abide eternally, forever. That is the great attainment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ الْمُعَذِّرُونَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ لِيُؤْذَنَ لَهُمْ وَقَعَدَ الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا كَذَبُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And those who have excuses, they came to be permitted to remain. So some Bedouins among the Muslims, they had valid excuses. They came to the Prophet ﷺ, they said, we cannot go to the battle. Some of the tafsir experts, they say that they have valid excuses, some say they don't. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they who have lied to Allah and his messenger sat at home. Sayyidu ladina kafaru bin adabun alim. Surah Tawbah, verse 19. There will strike those who disbelieve among them a painful punishment. Now, we recited this ayah, the ones who are excused from going out. It is not upon the weak, or the ill, or the ones that don't have any, anything to spend. They don't have any weapons, they don't have anything. They are sincere to Allah. It is not upon the doers of good anyway. So the next ayah talks about some of the Sahaba who comes to the Prophet Muhammad saying to the Prophet oh Allah carry us. And one important thing, my dear brothers, as you're walking in, that I want you to understand is, is we are talking about hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? Is it a fancy English word? It's called munafik in Arabic. What is hypocrisy? Hypocrisy is when you display something outwardly by wearing these clothes and giving a long beard and having a mispaha in your hands and doing a miswak. And inside your heart lives the devil, Shaytan. Okay? This is hypocrisy. Can you look at a Muslim and tell if he's a hypocrite? No. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that knows what's in your heart. Even Shaytan doesn't know what's in your heart. The angels, the ones that are writing down your good and bad deeds, they don't know what is in your heart. Only Allah knows. And that is why on the Day of Judgment, there is a Mizan. Have you ever wondered why there is a Mizan? Why do they take a good deed, like for example, you uh, fast in the month of Ramadan, they take a good deed, and they put it on this Mizan and they take the weight. Why do they take the weight? Doesn't it seem silly like two people that are fasting and one, one's fast is heavier than the other person's fast? Have you ever thought of this? You know, there's kids along that should should think as well. Think, why is it that some deeds are heavier and some deeds are lighter? It is because of what is within your heart or your mind at the time that you live. Because this is what we're talking about with hypocrisy. Is hypocrisy something that can happen to you and me? Absolutely. We may die as Muslims, but we may be hypocrites. So this is why we're taking, diving into the sila and finding out in the battle of Tabuk, we might not have a battle in front of us right now. So relay it to yourselves by saying, when there's something good that needs to happen in Islam, are you the first person to put up their hands? Okay. Or are you one of those that give excuses? You know, there's a drive happening for Palestine. The people are scrambling to make some money for a message. You know, something like that comes up. Are you the first person to find an excuse to do something else? Or are you the first person to help in this cause? 
That's how I want you to relate. We might not have a battle in front of us. We might not have a box lesson. The excuses are the same. You haven't gone to Hajj. This is the season of Hajj. Some of the close brothers from here and other places have left for Hajj now. If you have passed your life in not have Hajj months, this is a big problem. Are you making excuses now? So these Sahaba were coming to the Prophet and they were saying that we want to go. These were very poor Sahaba. But they still wanted to go. So they came to the Prophet before the battle and they said, We don't have, we're so poor that we don't have, we don't even have horses, we don't have any swords, we don't have shields, we don't have even clothes to get us to the battle. So we're ready to fight, but just help us. Help us get to the battle, and then we'll do the rest. So now the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, replied to them in this way. He said, I cannot provide you with anything. I hardly have anything. So these Sahaba were so sad that they were deprived from the honor of joining the army and giving their life. But that they left the Prophet with tears on their eyes. You can see the contrast. Some people are giving excuses. And they have the ability. Allah SWT, they're happy to stay behind. The rich people are happy to stay behind. And then you have these poor Sahaba. They wanted to go and when they were prevented, they cried. There's a difference between these two people. They're both Muslims. So Allah SWT says, وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ مَا إِذَا مَا أَتَوْكَ لِتَحْمِلَهُمْ قُلْتَ لَا أَجِدُ مَا أَحْمِلُهُمْ عَلَيْهِ تَوَلَّوْا وَأَعْيُنُهُمْ تَفِيضُوا مِنَ الدَّمْعِ حَزَنًا أَلَّا يَجِدُوا مَا يُنْفِقُونَ Surah Tawbah 92 Nor is there blame upon those who came to you that you might give them some money so that they can go as soldiers. I can find nothing for you to go. They turned back and they started crying. Grown men don't cry in front of people. But they went and they cried. إِنَّ مَسَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَسْتَأْذِنُونَكَ وَهُمْ أَغْمِيَا رَضُوا بِأَنْ يَكُونُوا مَعَ الْخَوَالِفِ وَتَبَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُ Surah so Tawbah 93, next verse. The cause for blame for those who ask permission from you, but they are rich. They are satisfied with the women and children who stay behind. Allah has sealed over their hearts. So they won't know. La yafahum. What is this? They don't have any faith. La yafahum. They have no knowledge. So they have no understanding and they have no knowledge. They don't have even. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Munafiqeen. Law kana aradan qariban wa safaran qasira. Latta ba'uka. ولكن بعدت عليهم الشقة وسيقفون بالله لو استطعنا لخرجنا معه يحلقون أنفسهم والله يعلم إنهم لكاذبون التوبة 42 Had it been an easy moderate trip if there wasn't much money, but there wasn't much treasure. If the distance went so far away, the hypocrites among the Muslims would have followed you. But because the travel is so far to get to Rome and fight them and empire, they said we would have gone forth with you, but it's it's uh, you know the travel is too much. They would destroy themselves with false oaths because indeed they are liars. Afallahu anka lima agita lahum hatta. يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَتَعْلَمَ الْكَلَدِينَ SubhanAllah Allah is revealing the hearts Tawbah 43 The Prophet is being told Don't give the excuses May Allah pardon you You know the Prophet He was a very kind person He was very, he was like a mercy to us So these people would come And Jibreel the angel, the archangel is coming And telling the Prophet He's lying He's lying He's lying. He's lying. And they're giving excuses. They're giving excuses. Oh, you know, my children are small. Uh, my house is being built. 
My uh, business is uh, running under the ground. They would give me the excuses, and the Prophet is getting the answers from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is huh? He's lying, he's lying, he's lying, he's lying, he's lying, he's lying. He's telling the truth, he's lying. And the Prophet still let them go. He still let them go. He said, okay, fine. I accept your excuse. Okay, fine. I accept your excuse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the verse of the Quran, this is why the Quran is not a book authored by the Prophet. This is something very important. The greatest book on earth that has ever been written. Okay, It wasn't written, it was revealed. But if you ask the Prophet Muhammad did you author this book? He would say no. Why? Because there's places where Allah is correcting and reprimanding the Prophet himself. So he's in front of those places. He's telling the Prophet Muhammad that may Allah forgive you for giving him this excuse. May Allah forgive you. Why did you let him go? يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Subhanallah, this is something that you need to understand is very, very important. That is, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, has and always been a mercy to mankind. And this is why you need to understand that at the end of the day, we as people that are Muslims, we rely on the mercy that comes from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why even if the khutbah becomes a bit fiery, or if the imam is uh, a little bit upset at the time, the deen itself has so much mercy built into it, that any person that is at, at any level of sin, or any level of good, can improve. This is how the deen of the Prophet Muhammad is called the deen of mercy. And this is something that we need to remember as well, as people that are listening to this. The Prophet is giving these people excuses knowing that they are lying to me. They're lying to his face. SubhanAllah. Wallahu Tawbah 44 now. Those who believe in Allah and the last day will not ask permission of you to be excused. They won't give excuses. Fighting with their wealth and with their lives. Allah is knowing of those who fear him. So the ones who have that one, the ones who are fearful of Allah, they're not going to try and find excuses. But you find them eager that they want to go and find it. Really. But the ones that are looking for excuses, Allah says about them, إِنَّمَا يَسْتَعْذِنُكَ أَلَّذِينَ لَا يَكْمِلُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْوَرْتَابِ قُلُوبُهُمْ فَهُمْ فِي غَيْرِهِ يَتَرَدَّنِ Toba, verse 45 now. Only those that will ask permission of you who don't even believe in Allah. They don't believe in the last day. They're Muslims. And their hearts are filled with doubt. And they're hesitating. And this is a fact. Those Muslims that misinterpret the concept of jihad, fighting, peace of Allah, they have weak iman. They're trying to get out of it. They're always in a state of hesitation. They're always in a state of unpriority. Imam said, why are you talking about jihad? This is a part of our religion. You're going to take some of the Torah and rip it out of the Quran? They're trying to find excuses to get out of the heart. It's a contradicting state. And it is a very changing heart. This person has a weak iman. They do not have true belief in Allah. Who is saying this? Allah. And they don't even believe in the Akhira. First of all, because of the iman in Allah, Allah will fear, uh, uh, this person will fear Allah more than anything else. And because of the Iman, the real person's heart, he will not have value for this world. He won't have value. And then Allah says about them, and this is the criteria for those who are really excused and who are not, who are hypocrites. Allah says, وَلَوْ أَرَادُ الْخُرُوجَ لَعَدُّ لَهُمْ عُدَّةً وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ إِمْبِعَاتَهُمْ فَتَبَّتَهُمْ وَقِيلَ قَعُودُ مَعَ الْقَعِيدِ So the Tawbah, so verse 46. And if they intended to go forth, they would have prepared for it. Brothers and sisters, anything important that you do in life, if you want to become a doctor, you need to prepare for it. You need to go to school. You need to pass. If you want to be an engineer, you have to go through years of education. The same thing happens in Islam. Any job, any profession, you need preparation, you need a degree, otherwise you're lying. Someone wants to be a doctor and they don't even go to school. 
They're lying to themselves. This person is dishonest with his own self. Same thing in Islam. If you say, for example, you want to make hijrah, fi sabinillah, you want to go overseas, you're being dishonest with yourself. You didn't make any preparations. What did you do? You want to strive in the back of Allah, and you are not doing any preparations for it? That is not an excuse. People are going for hajj right now, you haven't done your fucking hajj, and you have made no preparations, and you're saying Allah doesn't accept me. What are you talking about? Preparation is something that you need to do for years for such an event. And the Prophet is being told by Allah that it's better these two women come out. Why? لَوْ خَرَجُوا فِيكُمْ مَا زَادُكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَانًا وَلَا أَوْضَعُوا خِلَالَكُمْ يَبْغُونَكُمُ الْفِتْنَةِ وَفِيكُمْ سَمَّعُونَ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمُ بِالْظَالِمِ سُبْحَانَهُمْ Surah Al-Tawbah 47 have, have they gone forth with you? They would not have increased your army except in confusion. They would add to your, they would just add to your confusion because their minds are full of doubt. They're not real Muslims. They don't have yaqeen and iman in what they do. They're confused. These Muslims have doubts from the news. They have doubts from the hypocrites. They have doubts from the kuffar. Their minds are full of doubts. And they come out with you, your army, they'll just add confusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these people, Muslims, will be active among you and they'll just go and fit them. They're just going to come out with nanima, backbiting. They're going to do viva. They're going to discourse this unity in the army. These people that are giving excuses, they're not going to help you. Because the heart has a disease. Among you are avid listeners to them. Who is Allah speaking to? He is speaking to them. Now, this is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Because we're speaking about Munafiqun. They're Muslims. Outwardly, they look like Muslims. But inwardly, there's something else. They're the devil himself. Now, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? Allah is addressing the Sahaba, the best generation of students that were trained by not Imam Saab, not uh, a great scholar, a great alim, a great abid. No. They were trained by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah is the same in the verse of the Quran that they are among you, the Sahaba, People that avidly listen to these other Muslims that are called hypocrites. So they have sweet tongues. When they speak, even the Sahaba are listening to them. Because they're among the Muslims. This teaches us something very important. Some people may outwardly look and feel and say things. That is the whole point behind the hypocrites being so dangerous for the Muslims. It's very difficult to tell who a Muslim Munafiq is and a Muslim Muttafi is. They can have a sweet tongue. They can be very knowledgeable. They can be very prominent. They can be the one giving the khutbah. They could have a captivating personality. And you look up to them. And you listen to their words. Just like the Sahaba. And their words make sense to you. And that's why you become a listener to them. You subscribe to the channel. But in reality, they are deceiving you. Allah is giving this warning to the Sahaba. What do you think about us? How much confusion are these Muhammadun causing you today? When we are far away from the understanding of the Sahaba, are we the Sahaba? No. That is why it is actually very dangerous to just listen to anyone on YouTube and subscribe to their channel. What do you know about them? What do you know about them? Have you seen their house? They could be a tyrant to their own wife. They could be a tyrant to their own children. Do you know much about this person that you're, you're avidly listening to? Can you guarantee me that they are not hypocrites? This is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, when our fitra is corrupted, the Sahaba had a clean fitra. The Sahaba were trained by the Prophet. These people are listening to the hypocrites and they are listening in. We are living in a corrupt material world. The values and the norms today are so messed up. There is confusion in gender, there is confusion in schools, there is confusion in politics. A wide section of the Ummah is confused. They don't know what they're supposed to do. They don't know what their duties are. They're in a state of loss, Khusran. Brothers and sisters, it is very important to study the ayat of Surah Al-Tawbah. Study the ayat of Munafiqeen, hypocrites, so that you can be cautious. 
Number one, that we are not monophotic ourselves. We need to check. And number two, that we do not fall into or are fooled by hypocrites. Don't get fooled. You know, nifa is such a delicate thing. It's a very elusive thing. Even Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu an used to fear that he was a, he is a bunafiq. He used to go, you know, subhanAllah, this is something very telling. The Prophet says, I mean, what did he say about Umar radiallahu an? One of the Sahabi, one of the students. You know, the Prophet is the ultimate source of all this knowledge. Okay? Everything that I have taken, everything that any scholar has taken, everything that any person of anything has taken is from the Prophet And we are students of the 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 students. Okay, so we're so watered down by now. But this is something that I want you to understand. SubhanAllah, look at the Sahaba and what the Prophet Muhammad did for them. And even they are able to be tricked by the hypocrites. The Umar bin al-Khattab was a Sahabi that the Prophet ﷺ said, this student of mine, if there was a Prophet after me, it would be him. Now, is this a bad student or a good student? Extremely good student. And this is a Prophet that does not speak from his own hawa, his, his, his own heart's, uh, you know, uh, eye or his consciousness. He's speaking from wahi. And he's saying that Umar bin al-Khattab is a person that if there was a Prophet after me, it would be him. Now, the Prophet uh, Muhammad has said this about him. He's also the second Khalifa after Abu Bakr as siddiq that led the entire Muslim Ummah. In his rule, 75% of the earth was ruled by Muslims. Okay. Now, this person goes to Hudayfa radiallahu anhu. Hudayfa radiallahu anhu was the Sahabi, a student of the Prophet that was known to keep the secrets of the Prophet The secrets. Okay. So this Sahabi was the one that the Prophet would always tell like the names of the Hindus. Now he's getting wahi from Jibreel al Islam coming from Allah. And he could tell you everyone that's a hypocrite, but he would keep it hidden. So it's like these are the Muslims. And he knew exactly which one had a problem in their hearts. Which would probably cause them, uh, you know, the uh, not Jannah, they wouldn't get Jannah. They would get the Dark al the worst place in Hellfire. The deepest place would be reserved for them. Now, Amr bin al-Khattab goes to Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and asks him a favor. He is the Khalifa of the Muslims. He am a uh, disputed leader of the Muslims at the time. And he says to Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, can you check the list of munafiqs, the hypocrites, and just check that my name's not in there? He knew the names of every single hypocrite. I asked you in the name of Allah. Did the Prophet not mention me in one of the hypocrites? Hudayfa said no. And I am not going to answer this question for anyone else except you. But you're not on the list. SubhanAllah. What should we be doing? How far away are we from Allah bin al-Khattab? It is better that they didn't come out. The hypocrites. They're not going to fight Fee Sabilillah. They're not going to fight Fee Sabilillah. They have a disease in their hearts. So they're going to cause more confusion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مِنْ قَوْلُ وَقَلَّبُوا لَكَ الأمور حتى جاء الحق وظهر أمر الله وهم كارهون. سورة التوبة verse 48. They had already decided the tension before you. They have upset the matter for you until the truth came and then the ordinance of Allah appeared and they were averse. Abdullah bin Ubay was a despised Muslim. He was a hypocrite. Everyone hated him. He was a manafiq. Let's put this in, the, in things in the right concept. Abdullah bin Ubay was a leader among the people. He was a lord of Khazraj. He was a chief among the tribe of Khazraj, all Muslims. Abdullah bin Ubay, before the khutbah, he used to stand up, okay? And he would tell the people, Muhammad Sallallahu is the messenger of Allah. Listen to his words. He was the person that would stand in front of the people introducing the khutbah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This guy. And this guy was a hypocrite. Umar bin al-Khattab said to the Prophet ﷺ, let's kill him. The Prophet ﷺ said that there are many men that will fight for this man. Abdullah bin Ubay was a hypocrite, but he had a following. So who are you following, o Muslims? Who have you subscribed to? Have you checked? Do they have hypocrisy in their hearts? These were prominent members of society. That have caused such dissension among the Muslims and problems among the past. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah that I just recited. 
ومنهم من يقول ذن لي ولا تقتني ألا في الفتنة سقطوا وإن جهنم لمحيطة بالكافر سورة التوبة verse 14 The Prophet Sallallahu told Al-Jit bin Qais and he was one of the leaders of the Munafiqeen hypocrites among the Muslims Are you ready for fighting Romans? Al-Jit bin Qais he said O oh, Messenger of Allah my people know I have a reputation of being a womanizer I love women and I fear look at this excuse I fear that if I go with you to the Roman Empire I might fall into fitna because the Roman women are very beautiful MashaAllah Aswar the yellow, they used to be called the children of Aswar, the yellow people. That was the Caucasians that we see today. Al Jabbi bin Qais is saying, he's a leader among the Muslims. If I go to the Roman Empire, I might fall for one of their women. The reason I want to stay behind is because I want to stay away from Fitna. He gave himself an amazing excuse. Romeo over here doesn't want to go out to fight because it might cause me Fitna. You know, what if I fall into haram? So Allah says, what says, Minhum after this verse, among them is me who says, permit me to remain at home and do not put me into trial. Allah says, what reveals the ayah from this guy? Into trial they've already fallen. This guy's already in a trial. Indeed, hell will encompass him. What are they talking about? By staying behind. You're staying in fitna. If you go to fight peace in your life, you'll be stay at fitna. But if you remain behind, you will be in fitna. You know the ones who always talk about the excuse, uh, uh, brother Imam Saab, uh, I know it's the time for Hajj, but I can't go because I've got school exams. Uh, you know, Imam Saab, I can't go because I have a mortgage on my house. Imam Saab, I can't go to Hajj because, uh, uh, you know, my business is going to fall apart. You know, I have little children. And excuse and excuse and excuse and excuse and excuse. You know, these people, they have a disease in their hearts. And when they're being truthful, just for a second, between them and Allah, the one who knows what you are thinking, what is in the deepest places of your heart, you will know that you are lying. You've always been lying. You can trick the answer, you can trick the scholar, you can trick your mother, and you can trick your father. You can't trick Allah. Spiritually, I'm not prepared. They will never be prepared to go for Hajj. They will always be in a state of fitna. It is when they go out, feast of Allah, and this we're talking about jihad. And walladina jahadu, uh, subhanAllah, in the verse, the ones who struggle in our cause, Allah will only guide them to our home. So guidance can only be bought by you giving your elbow. Allah SWT says about the Munafiqeen, in to sibka hasanatun tasukum wa in to sibka musribatun yaqulu qad akhazna amrana min qablu wa yatawallu wa hum farihun. So the Tawbah 50. If good befalls you, it distresses them. If distress, disaster strikes you, they said we put our matter in the hand of Allah. They're rejoicing, they're happy. This is another habit of the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites. They're happy when the Muslims are in disaster. And when they stay behind and the Muslims lose the battle, they say, why did you go out? You're stupid. You should have listened to me. And it is actually the opposite. They have fallen into trouble by staying behind. And then Allah subhanahu wa says, قُلْ هَلْ تَرَبَّسُونَ بِنَا إِلَّا إِحْدَ الْحُسْنَيَنِ وَنَحْنُ نَتَرَبَّسُوا بِكُمْ أَنْ يُصِيبَكُمْ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابٍ مِنْ عِنْدِي أَوْ بِأَيْدِينَا فَتَرَبَّسُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ مُتَرَبِّسُونَ سبحان الله so the Tawbah, verse 15. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you await for us except one of the two things will come to you? What are the two best things for a Muslim? Either victory or martyrdom. You die on the battlefield. While we await for you, that Allah will afflict you from a punishment from himself or at our hands. So wait, indeed we are waiting as well. This is addressed to the Muslims. This ayah is for the Muslims. So the Muslim should tell the Munafiq, 
Whatever happens to us, we're going out to give our lives, even if we lose. And you think that you're wise for staying behind. You need to understand that our objective is only two. Either we win or we die. And these are the best things to wait for. While we are waiting, two things are going to happen to you. Either you're going to get punished from Allah or you're going to get punishment from us, the Muslims. We're going to eventually find out that you were not actually a real Muslim. You know when push comes to shove, when things become difficult, you find out who's who. You find out. And so he said that for you, the people that are staying behind, and giving these excuses to the Prophet ﷺ for not going to war, you guys, one of two things is going to happen to you. Either we're going to find out, and you're going to die. Or, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to escape all of us, you're going to trick all of us, you're going to die in your grave, with your house, and your car, and your mansion, and your amazing stuff that you've uh, accumulated. And when you get to the grave, you are going to be punished with a painful punishment. These are the two things that you're waiting for. Which ones are the better things to wait for? We're both waiting. This is the battle of Tabuk. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he would leave to go fi sabilillah, he would usually appoint someone behind him to take care of the affairs of Medina, to take care of the affairs of the family. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on this journey of battle of Tabuk, he appointed Muhammad bin Maslama to be the Amin over Medina, all of Medina. And he appointed Ali bin Abi Talib to take care of his family. So some of the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites among the Muslims, as usual, started spreading rumors. How come the Prophet ﷺ left Ali bin Abi Talib behind? Istasqala, they were saying. This means that he's happy. He's a burden. Ali bin Abi Talib is a burden. The Prophet ﷺ left him behind. Why? So the Ali bin Abi Talib went to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, this is what people are saying. They think that I'm some kind of coward. Ali bin Abi Talib wanted to go out. He was one of the strongest fighters. He wanted to leave. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told Abi Talib, Ya Ali, Ama tarda an takuna minni bi manzilati Haruna min Musa illa annahu la bin nabiya ba'ni. O oh, Ali, doesn't it please you to be, to me, what Harun was to Musa? Except that there is no Prophet after me. I'm the last. When Musa alayhi salam went to speak to Allah, he left behind who? Harun. And he appointed him to take care of the affairs of Bani Israel. So the Prophet is saying, Ali bin Abi Talib, I'm doing this to you. You are to me what Harun was to Musa. Except that there is no prophet after you. This is the last chance. Harun was a prophet. This is one of the great virtues of Ali bin Abi Talib. The people of Sunnah believe in Ali. Obviously the Shia carry this too far. And based on it, uh, what cannot be based on this hadith. But we as Ahl Sunnah, we believe that the Prophet ﷺ did leave Ali bin Abi Talib behind. And this is an authentic narration. And he had a special status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah. And the army left for the Battle of Tabuk to fight the Roman Empire. Some of the Munafiku, the hypocrites among the Muslims were speaking among themselves. They said, Do you think that fighting the Romans is like Arabs fighting another Arab tribe? You're going to come back tied in ropes. Romans are going to wipe the flow with you. This is a, the Roman Empire you're fighting. This is a demoralizing thing to say to an army. It's not good to talk to another Muslim and put fear in the heart of another soldier. It's a bad deed. You're terrifying them about their enemy. Even though this conversation was private, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed this conversation to the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet sallallahu told Ammar bin Yasin, and he said, go to those men and ask them what they had said. Because they have burned themselves. at taraku at riku Catch them because they burnt for what they said. What have they said? If they don't admit it, tell them you have said so and so. He told them the exact words they used. So Ammar bin Yasser told them that you said this and this and this. And they came back to the Prophet and they apologized. They said we shouldn't have said that. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُودُ وَنَلْعَبُ Oh Rasulullah! You know what they said to the Prophet ﷺ? Once they have demoralized the army, what did they say? What would you say? If you said something, there's the army of Muslim going out to help the Roman Empire, the greatest empire at the time. And you're saying stuff to demoralize them. The Prophet ﷺ finds out, there's a verse of the Quran revealed, and the Prophet ﷺ sends a messenger to you to say, why did you say that? 
Because Allah knows your heart. Allah knows the conversations that you have even with your own wife, your own child. He knows everything. So now this verse is revealed and they got thought. So when they came to the Prophet ﷺ, they said, Oh Prophet of Allah, we're just joking. What we know? We're joking. Inshallah, you hear this today, my brothers and sisters. You hear this today. Ammar bin Yasir came to them and told them, they said apologizing and then they said, we're joking. Allah revealed the ayah. We're just joking, O Prophet. We were, we didn't mean it. So Wala in Saaltahum Layakulunna Inna Kunna Nahudu Wanala Kul Abilla Wa Ayatihi Wa Rasulihi Kuntum Tastahziun La Tatiru. قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ إِنَّا نَعْفُ عَنْ طَاعِفَةٍ مِّنْكُمْ نُعَذِّبْ طَاعِفَةً بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا مُجْرِمِينَ توبة 65 and 66 If you ask them, they will say We're joking. We were only conversing and playing around. Say to them, is it Allah? and his verses, and his messenger that you are mocking? Don't make an excuse. You have disbelieved after you believed. You were a Muslim then, and then you said these things that you are non-Muslim. We will punish your faction. These are verses 65 and 66 of Surah Tawbah. I encourage you to go and read it. You know, joking around, mocking around, anything of religious value is haram, and it can reach the level of kufr. Because Allah says, لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم. Don't make an excuse. You have disbelieved. And if we look at it, my dear brothers, why am I mentioning this? Have they, what have they said? That the Romans are going to defeat you. Mocking and making fun of anything in Islam. Whether it is making fun of Quran, making fun of Hadith, making fun of Rasulullah وسلم, joking in a way, that you demean the scholars, demean the imam, demean the people of Haq. This is dangerous territory. This can lead to kufr, you leaving Islam. You need to be very careful and not make jokes. Because sometimes there are jokes that are inappropriate. They take you out of the folds of Islam. They are making fun of the surah of the Quran. And this should be avoided because of the extreme danger in it. This is blasphemy. As a Muslim, you need to be very cautious. It also tells us that Islam is sacred. We have to hold it in high esteem. If you don't give it value, who will give it value? You know, one of the brothers, he said to me, uh, I go to a function with my work and I don't drink alcohol, but I just take a glass and I pretend to drink. What do I do? I take the glass and I pretend to drink. I put it up to my lips, but I don't actually drink it. I honestly felt like grabbing him and lifting him up in the air and shaking him so that Iman enters his heart again. You stupid fool, if you died at that time, do you think that angels will make any distinction between you and the other kuffar that are drinking in that bar? What is wrong with you? You are joking around and playing around with the deen. This is your entire after on the line. We may not be in battle right now, but these things are very important. If you are in a gathering of your own friends, and they start mocking at the verses of the Quran, the Ahadith. And they start making jokes about the people that give uh, religious sermons. Be very, very careful because you could be included in those people that are not even Muslim anymore from that day onwards. We should not let anyone belittle our religion. If you don't value it, how are the people at work going to value it? This is a stern word to the Munafiqeen who were making fun of the Muslims. And they were Muslims themselves. And also today, my dear brothers, and sisters, if I can implement these meanings today, 2024, we are weak or disunited. We should not spread rumors that weaken the Muslims. Don't do that. Don't watch so much political stuff that you just think that all Muslims are defeated. <coughs> Muslims are weak. They have no hope. We have no future. No. We as Muslims need to not involve in this. We need to uplift the Ummah. We need to encourage the Ummah. 
وليس رواندي أمة كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس. You are the best nation that was brought forth to mankind. We need to remind the Ummah that we have a bright future and we have a bright past as well. We do. As Muslims, we have a bright future. Because the future belongs to the Muttaqeen. Verse of the Quran. The end belongs to the people of Taqwa. So we should not speak about what's happening in Palestine and what's happening around the world as a means to demoralize the Muslims. This disunity in the sense that demoralizes the Muslims. No, uplift the Muslims. Don't give up, O oh Muslims. We Muslims will never give up. That is the message of Islam and that is the message of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, my dear brothers and sisters of Islam, before we finish, Alhamdulillah, we are in the month of Dhul Qa'ah. And we are now approaching the month of Dhul Hijjah. And as you know, our brothers and sisters have already started to leave for Hajj. There are a few very important events that are coming up. In this weekend, we are going to be sighting the moon. On the groups that you are all following, Alhamdulillah, we will be able to tell you when the first of the Hijjah falls. The first nine days of this month are extremely important. I would say 10, but the first nine days are where you can fast. So there is a sunnah of fasting on these days. If you cannot fast nine days in a row, you know, there is a place in the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa takes a qasam, okay? in ashr in the Quran. And which 10 days are, is Allah Subhanahu wa talking about? If Ramadan has the most amazing nights, the most amazing, amazing days are the days of the Hijjah, these first nine or 10 days. So what is encouraged in the Sunnah is that you fast the first all the way to the ninth of the Hijjah. If you cannot do that, you just fast the ninth of the Hijjah only, which is the day when the pilgrims are standing in Arafah. Just fasting this day alone is like fasting the entire year. Crazy. So inshallah, I applaud me and you that are not going for Hajj to do this practice. And then of course, we have the days of Eid itself, closer to the day when we give some announcements about when the Eid prayer is and so on. And then we have three days after it, the Eid day and three days after it, which are called Yom Al-Tashriq, 11, 12, and 13. They're actually not, it is not permissible for you to fast in those days. There are only five days in Islam that you cannot fast even if you wanted to. If you fasted, it wouldn't be accepted from you. Okay, these are the five. Four of them are coming up. Okay, 10, 11, 12, 13. So these are very, very important days. And if you can take time to spend as much time in worshiping Allah, uh, doing what you are supposed to do. And this is extremely important if you cannot do Hajj. If you find yourself in a state that you are now sitting there listening to this and you have not done your Fard Hajj, make the intention right now and open a bank account that you can save and start saving for right now, today. This is a way that you can do Tawbah. Oh Allah, university exams was not a valid excuse. Oh Allah, getting married wasn't a valid excuse. Oh Allah, all of these things, when I read a book of fiqh with an actual person that studied the deen, was not a valid excuse. I've done 10 Umrahs and I haven't even done one Hajj. Shame on me. How are you going to accept? How are you going to explain this on the day of judgment? How are you going to explain it? And now you're as old as you are. Your hair is going white and you still haven't done faridas of the deen. My dear brother, this is the message for Dhul Hijjah. And inshallah ta'ala, we are doing some fundraising as well to build a message in this locality. Inshallah, you will find some messages will come out soon. And inshallah, give generously towards that. Uh, because inshallah, these places that we're doing khutbahs in are getting very small. Even the class that we have for Muslim children studying after school is getting to uh, 100, 150 now. And even the school that we are hiring is getting... Uh, too packed. So inshallah ta'ala, uh, do the best that you can. Islam will always win at the end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, help us. And there is women's classes. Uh, there is a class that's going to be happening this weekend on Sunday, which is the second fortnight. So inshallah, get involved in that and get your ladies involved.